Oh, sir, excuse me, but uh, you have a different friend today, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I make these, and so I just sold him. Oh, oh you just sold him? You sold me? Yeah, I just sold you. You yeah. dirty rat. <laughs> no, actually, I didn't. Oh, oh, camera. Jeez. Well, now that you're sold, will you have a new name? <laughs> uh, he's speechless. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, well that terminates that interview. <laughs> Oh, how did you do wow. that? <laughs> See my gorgeous legs? They're, they're great. Oh, look at those legs down there. Chicken it's a, a yes. chicken legs. No, 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 no something no, wrong with that. No. Carol would never do that. No, no. <laughs> they have a rainbow hue to them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they do. From Las Vegas, Nevada, it's the Vegas International Ventriloquist Festival on this edition of Out and About. Hocus pocus chicken. I keep forgetting the spell. What? What is that? Oh boy! I turned my neighbor into a frog. Can't fix it. In the world of ventriloquism, there's two styles of puppets. There's the traditional wooden figures, what we think of a dummy. Um, Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, that would be a classic wooden figure. Um, Danny O'Day, wooden figure. Or something like this, which is more closely resembling what the Muppets look like. They're made of soft foam rubber material. So the technique for operating this kind of puppet is very different from operating a standard wooden figure. Are we allowed to give away any secrets today? We'll give away any secrets that you like. Right, well, why, how is he staring at me? <laughs> no, he's staring at you because behind my back, yes. I have hidden a little cable. Uh -huh. And when I push on the cable, it makes his eyes open and close. And if I push one, he winks. And uh, that way, and wink and blink. That's a particularly special feature that I've added to my soft foam rubber puppets. Uh, one of the reasons that so many people prefer the wooden uh, characters is because they have all those things built on a little control rod. One of the differences between operating this kind of puppet, the head is hollow, so your hand is inside talking, as opposed to a ventriloquist figure, there's a stick and you're pulling a little trigger control. Visitors to a popular Las Vegas hotel casino were in for a lot of double talk at this year's Vegas Ventriloquist Festival. The annual gathering at the Las Vegas Imperial Palace showcased some of the industry's very best performers, attracting scores of animated comedians who seem to be every bit as wooden as their human alter egos. Well, the convention, now we call it the Vegas Ventriloquist Festival, but it is a convention, Ventriloquist Convention. It came about because there were a few ventriloquists that came to me from various places. I live here in Vegas and said, please do a convention here. You know, we'll support you. And, and, uh, and they pressed me and pressed me. And finally I gave in. I said, OK, I'll try it out. And it, we, the first convention, we had over 350 people come in. <laughs> from all over the world, so I was quite quite amazed. So it indeed is an international thing, which means that there are all kinds of people from different lands. Well, how how far do they come? <laughs> well, we get people from Thailand, from Japan, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, France, you name it. They come from all over the world. So how many years have you been doing all of this? It, we're in our eighth year now. Do you have manufacturers uh, visiting you? Uh, when you say manufacturers, you mean the people that make the figures? Yes. Yeah. Yes, of course. We have uh, we have a dealer's what we call a dealer's room, or I should say a vendor's room, uh, and that's where people sell all kinds of ventriloquist dummies, or how to do ventriloquism courses, or books on ventriloquism, and so on and so forth. 
It seems that um, so many of the people here are just plain happy in what they're doing. That was the first thing that I noticed. Uh, have you noticed that as well? Yes, it's kind of a, a feeling of exuberance, I yeah. guess. You know, well, it's a, it's it's a fun thing, ventriloquism, and so I guess that shines through. The seasoned performers that appeared as special guests at this year's show help to carry on an entertainment tradition that has kept this special skill popular over countless generations. As an entertainment, it goes back about 400 years. See, it was originally used by ancient diviners to imitate the departed spirits of the dead. And these ancient diviners were literally called ventriloquists. And it's from two Latin words, ventra, local, which means belly, I speak. And they used to pretend that uh, a demon or a spirit dwelt in their stomach and they would talk to the spirit, which was heard to answer them. So it began as a form of necromantic divining. And it didn't become an entertainment until about 400 years ago, when it started on the streets in Europe and then finally moved into the coffee houses and then eventually into the theater. So how has it uh, changed over the years? Uh, quite considerably. When uh, ventriloquists began entertaining with it on stage uh, in around about 1796, they never used ventriloquist figures, as we call them, you call them dummies. They merely used to have conversations with invisible people, and maybe they would have a, a person upstairs or below the floor or off stage, and this is how it began. And this was quite an art form because it became known as throwing the voice, of course. And then the ventriloquist figure, as we call them, uh, came in about 1850s when vaudeville and musical really took off. Was that in the United States or Europe? Or? That was in Europe. That was in Europe and the United States, you know, because it was a simultaneous thing. You called it burlesque here and vaudeville. We called it musical in Europe. Like the pioneering duo of Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop, today's performers prove that even the simplest ventriloquist figures can still captivate an audience. Uh, my background mostly is in television. I do uh, children's television projects and DVDs and videos, so my style of learning how to manipulate a character is very based on the subtleties involved in television. But I spent uh, uh, 15 years performing live on stage as a magician, and so I've come up with a hybrid of styles which uh, benefits from much of the subtlety that you can do in television with a style of, of lip movement um, with the ability to fill a room that you need um, with a live audience that even though that you're just one person with a puppet on the stage you still want to be able to capture the attention of, of hundreds or maybe thousands of people in a room so techniques for opening up everything that you do not only are you demonstrating here, but I do understand that you manufacture or make these little characters? I do. All of these figures I created in my little workshop, which is a converted bedroom in my house in Washington, D.C. Um, my characters are made out of foam rubber, the stuff that you uh, have inside your seat cushions. It's very soft and very flexible, so you can you know, do some cool stuff with that. Uh, they're glued together, sewed together, tacked together, spit to polish, and a lot of, I use hot melt glue. It's a glue stick that gets about 400 degrees, and so my hands have lots of burns and scars all over them because I'm suffering from my art. I'm also unusual in that most ventriloquists don't make their own figure. There's a lot of really good figure makers out there, and most of the ventriloquists will buy uh, from a manufacturer. I make and perform my, my own things. Um, puppeteers and ventriloquists are different that way. Puppeteers, most puppeteers, make their own puppets and perform. Ventriloquists, even though it's a puppet, um, they uh, have somebody else make it. And it's really interesting. If you really want to get a ventriloquist mad, call them a puppeteer. Uh, I noticed that one of your workshops uh, is done by an actor, and I, I believe that uh, being a ventriloquist must indeed be uh, that of an actor. <laughs> Well, I think it's essential. I think if you see really good ventriloquists, they are usually very good actors. Sherry Lewis was a good actress, and certainly Edgar Bergman was an actor. 
and played in, in many films as an actor. And, and the important part about ventriloquism is acting with the figure, that believability to be able to listen to the figure when it's talking, but not appearing to listen, just like an actor would playing off another actor. And that's, a, that's, a, that's an essential uh, technique. We spotted you over from the other side of the room. What's your name? Raggedy Ann. Raggedy Ann? Raggedy Ann. Why is that name familiar? Well, that's what she calls me. Well, that's who you are. And why didn't Raggedy Andy come? Well, because he got to go home with Kirch. Kirch? Uh-huh. Kirch who? Because <laughs> you're tight. <laughs> oh, that's like one of those knock-knock jokes. Uh, that's really bad, too. <laughs> How can you tell such bad jokes? Hi, somebody really silly told them to me. Oh, I see. Well. <laughs> anyway, they, have you seen me before? Huh? Uh, well, yes, I, I think I saw you across the room. Is that a song, the humming on or something? No, I mean, I've been around a long, long time. I bet I've been around longer than you. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Oh. I don't have no wrinkles, though. No, did you dye your hair? Uh-uh. Oh. It oh. Comes, it comes out that way. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You like it, mister? Yeah, it's, it's really very nice. And that polka dot dress is really very attractive. Uh, yes. I keep trying to get the starts off of it. Why are you wearing an apron, may I ask? Because I'm really sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> Butch has been with me for 50 years. 50, 50 years, uh, oh. 5 0. And uh, he's uh, had an uh, opportunity of appearing for President Kennedy's daughter at Hyannis Fort, Massachusetts. Oh. Yeah, he did for the President Kennedy at Hyannis Fort. Yeah. Well, there's, there's an honor, isn't it? Uh, and we've also been on the Ted Mack Original Amateur Hour in 1960 out wow. of New York City. Wow. Yeah. And we come from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, in Thalmouth. That's right. This is great being on your show. Have you been having fun today? Yes, we have. Uh, we enjoy the convention here. Uh, we hope that uh, a lot more people will be coming in the future, and we keep the art of ventriloquism alive. And this is what it's all about. And uh, where I've been doing shows for over the years, it's been a great honor to be a ventriloquist and have all these friends that we have here today. So much fun, isn't it? Oh, it's so much fun. If you have seen all the uh, ventriloquists and all the dealers here with their figures, uh, this is... It's an art that you cannot replace. When we return, we'll take a peek inside the head of one of these creations to reveal its mechanical secrets. And we'll witness one of the largest gatherings of ventriloquists ever as the performers put their heads together for our group picture, When Out and About continues. <laughs> <laughs> 